Ding dong! Hello everyone, it's another What Culture Wrestling video and as always, when Stone Cold Steve Austin drops a brand new edition of the Broken Skull Sessions podcast, we are here to break it down and give you all of the best bits and believe you me, this was a good one, there were plenty of best bits. We've got Bailey, we've got Stone Cold Steve Austin, both are huge fans of one another and as you can imagine, the meeting of the two minds brings only the good content, which is strictly what we are aiming to provide in 2021. I know we give you these highlights and say you should probably do this instead of watching it, but I highly recommend if you have the time, you have one hour and 20 minutes or whatever it is, you should watch this video. It's amazing. I've been waiting for this one for so long. Let's not wait any longer. Don't just take my word for it though, because here are 10 things we learned from Bailey on Steve Austin's Broken Skull Sessions podcast. Number 10, WWE put Bailey in a separate promo class. Now, by her own admission, promos weren't something that came naturally to Bailey. She focused so much on the in-ring stuff, and let's face it, she's one of the best in-ring, that she never really thought she'd have to do anything else. She could just worry about a character or say promos a little bit later down the line. And we get this clip from back in 2013 where she's cutting a promo in FCW, and she says herself the only thing she ended up doing every time they did these classes was crying because she just couldn't figure out how to get to the nugget of what she was and who she was as a character. Dusty Rhodes had worked with her extensively as well as a producer she calls Chris, and they're trying to figure out what it is that is her thing that's gonna get her over as a wrestler. But every time they try to do that with her, she says the only thing that she could see herself as was just this huge wrestling fan. So they decided, well, sod it. Why don't we use that and try and turn that into a character? The childlike wonder that we get with the hugger character that is Bailey, someone who loves the wrestling business and loves wrestlers. And ultimately, the whole thing transferred into this amazing character that was so relatable and more importantly, so believable. Number nine, she felt like a four horsewoman outsider. Now she told Stone Cold that between the four horsewomen, there's always been an ultra competitive edge, but not necessarily in a negative way, in a way that the four of them all want the same thing to be the very best, but they also want to help each other to get to that destination. Now Bailey has said in her own head, she always felt like she was the best and tried to keep that to herself. But as time went on, she began to feel like a little bit of an outsider because Charlotte and Sasha were close at times, and then Charlotte and Becky were close at times, but she never really found a footing until her and Sasha started to form their bond. Now we'll get to those matches between Sasha and Bailey in just a second, don't you worry. But she said for a little while, that kind of snapped her out of that feeling of an outsider. But then, if you recall, all three of the other four horsewomen were called up to the main roster, leaving Bailey by herself in NXT. And as you can imagine, it was hard for her not to wonder why she was the only one who'd been left behind. Number eight, reliving Brooklyn with Austin is amazing. Now, if you only watch one part of this whole podcast, then please make it this one because Stone Cold Steve Austin and Bailey watching back Bailey and Sasha's match from NXT TakeOver Brooklyn is absolutely amazing. Stone Cold is just such a Bailey fan. You can tell how much he loves this match. He knows it inside and out. And as a little aside as well, genuinely, I could watch Stone Cold watching people's matches that he loves and breaking them down forever. Stone Cold's love and appreciation and admiration for everything that Bailey and Sasha are doing in the ring during this match is there and it's plain for everyone to see. And they kind of marvel at how good the crowd is as well at the time. Think back to that electric crowd at NXT TakeOver Brooklyn. And it's one that Bailey says is her favorite she's ever worked in front of and she would desperately love to perform in front of them again. Not only that, but just the crowd in general might be nice. Nevertheless, the pair of them really specifically give so much love to this TakeOver Brooklyn crowd because let's face it, it was absolutely absolutely amazing. This is a huge moment in wrestling history in terms of wrestling in general, women's wrestling, and I tell you what, man, you just love to see Stone Cold loving his time on this podcast with whoever he's talking to, and you can see how much Bailey appreciates it. Gah, God damn it. Gets you right here, right where your heart is, right there in the heart. Number seven, when she found herself as a worker. Now for Bailey, things had to get worse before they could get better. And as you recall in 2015, both Charlotte Flair, Sasha Banks and Becky Lynch were all called to the main roster, leaving Bailey as the only one in NXT. And at first, as you can probably imagine, she saw that as a huge negative. Why don't they want me up on the main roster? Why have they left me here? But then she realized that actually she'd been left in NXT and she was the only one there. And the spotlight, was just on Bailey. She was the champion at the time. She had a chance to be the leader in the locker room now that everyone else was gone. And this was actually maybe the best thing for her. It was a golden opportunity for her to show WWE what she was capable of and what she was capable of by herself 
without the power of the four horsewomen. But on top of that, it also gave her a huge opportunity to train and help the next batch of female performers that were coming through at the time. The likes of Carmella, the likes of Liv Morgan, and the likes of Lacey Evans. But not just that, she also got an opportunity to put on some amazing matches Two with Asuka, which you'll recall were both brilliant, and she even managed to get some amazing matches out of Nia Jax, and as we all know, that's no easy feat. And even better than that, in the long run, it probably worked out better for Bailey too, because you recall the three who got called up were all put into those little groups like PCB and Team Bad, and they kind of had to figure out the kinks of how that was going to work. By the time Bailey got to the main roster, again, the spotlight was just on her. She didn't have to worry about being in a faction or a team or a group, and she was there to shine as just Bailey. Number six, what put a chip on her shoulder? Now, despite a solid start on the main roster, and who could forget that debut she made when she came out to help Sasha Banks? Ultimately, the initial run on the main roster wasn't exactly all roses for Bailey. As you recall, that came to a head on the August 7th, 2017 edition of Monday Night Raw. Bailey had legitimately injured her shoulder and was going to be out, missing her match at SummerSlam. And she came out in front of the crowd in Toronto to tell them how sorry she was for getting injured, but how much she appreciated all of their love. And what did they do? They just booed the hell out of her. Stone Cold kind of commends her on trying to direct the promo at this point and react into the crowd as it obviously wasn't the reaction they were looking for. They were looking for sympathy here for a legitimate real injury. But Bailey said ultimately she was left feeling a bit hurt because these were supposed to be her guys and gals and they were just flat out rejecting her. All in all though, Bailey says she did know and was aware that her character was becoming stale. And this was like a huge exclamation point to that. Something had to change, otherwise this was gonna be the rest of her career on the main roster. Number five, why Bailey didn't enjoy SummerSlam 2019. Now, curiously, Bailey told Austin that her match with Ember Moon at SummerSlam 2019 and the feud that was to go with it was supposed to be a whole lot bigger than it actually was. And she felt like whatever the plan was, she doesn't really elaborate, didn't live up to what actually was executed in the ring on that night. This kind of draws a wry smile from Stone Cold. Who knows what Vince McMahon can be like and can change his mind on the night. And also the promises made aren't always kept in that department. But still, Bailey herself acknowledges that she was in a rut at the time and what she was offering to the women's division in 2019 wasn't what she felt like she was capable of and she was a bit maddened by the whole thing. And looking back at that card specifically, you can understand why Bailey might feel like that because there was other performers who were bringing bigger and more interesting stories on the night. You had Charlotte against Trish Stratus for one and on top of that, you had Becky Lynch versus Natalia. Two feuds that were spotlighted much more than maybe what was happening with her and Ember Moon. Two talented performers, no doubt, but the actual end product between the two and what they were allowed to do didn't quite hit the mark. Number four, the big image change almost never happened. Now by late 2019, Bailey was desperate for a change as she alludes to on the podcast and says that she needed to mix things up and that's kind of what brought around the whole gimmick change that we would eventually get. But that wasn't always on the cards, can you believe? And that wasn't even anybody else's idea per se. She was the one who felt like she needed to change and if it was gonna be a change, it needed to be a big one. You see, the initial plan after she dropped the SmackDown Women's title to Charlotte Flair at Hell in a Cell 2019 was for Bailey to cry and throw a bit of a tantrum and then go backstage and ultimately come out as a heel next time on SmackDown, but with no real big changes to the look or anything like that. She realized that just wasn't gonna work. She's been here before where the crowd were into it and weren't believing her. She knew she was gonna have to do something drastic if people were really gonna buy into this. So being the brilliant creative mind that Bailey is and having the passion and enthusiasm that she does for the business, she begged and pleaded with the decision makers backstage, yes, that does include Vince McMahon, to let her cut away all of the things that the fans really love about her, starting with that hair, the trademark hair and the bobble, and on top of that, of course, the inflatable, flailing, wailing arm folks, you know who I'm on about. She obviously managed to talk them into it and it was seen by her as a last ditch effort to save her career. Number three, she nearly became Eddie Guerrero in WCW. Now hearing Bailey mention this on the podcast kind of makes sense because she was frustrated with her position in the company and after she turned heel, if you remember those early promos, she was a bit, her voice was shaky. She felt like she was angry about things. She was talking about how much she hated the fans, etc., etc. It was all the kind of stuff that Eddie Guerrero was doing during the Icon's final year in WCW, where he was venting his frustrations, but ultimately just looked very miserable while doing it. And for anybody who hasn't seen these Eddie Guerrero promos, back in 1999, Eddie was furious and angry and frustrated that WCW, and Eric Bischoff in particular, saw him as a bit of an afterthought, saw him as someone who wasn't worth investing in particularly. And he was miserable and the whole, every vibe that he came out with was just one of doom and gloom. Bailey wanted to kind of reenact that as her heel persona, but unfortunately everything was changed 
when the global pandemic happened. So some 20 years later, here we are, Bailey initially starting her heel run, looking like she's having the worst time ever, and by the time the pandemic happens, all of a sudden she realised that wasn't going to work without an audience to play off, and that's where this sort of obnoxious, childish heel character came from, and I think we can all agree it's the best thing that ever happened. And on top of that, Austin even said that he felt like the change in that direction was really important because he wasn't sure if the dry Eddie Guerrero character would have actually translated for the one Bailey was trying to do. Number two, 2020 is arguably the most fun she's ever had. Now, while 2020 was obviously a year full of doom and gloom we could all do with forgetting, I think Bailey seems to feel like 2020 might have been her best year yet. She's had a blast working at the Thunderdome and in front of no crowd, even if she does feel really bad, she says, about the fact that fans weren't able to buy tickets and be there live in attendance during her evolution into this excellent character. As a performer though, this has been a huge opportunity for Bailey to develop herself as a character and as a person and as an in-ring performer even, and she actually acknowledges that herself. Her self-awareness is so great. You can tell she knows when she's good and when she's bad. And in terms of her actual charisma as a character, she says it took a while for her to figure these things out. But I think we can all agree she's certainly found it now. 2020 allowed her to come out of her shell and really find her groove with her and Sasha Banks. And between the two of them, she says she loved the chance to just act like real jerks and find new and creative ways to get on people's nerves, particularly think of the Michael Cole relationship she has, where she just back and forth to take the mix. She says she doesn't even know what that is, but it obviously works so well. Most importantly though, she says it taught her to be selfish a bit more, which is seeing her get to that next level of her career. And immediately as she says that, you see Stone Cold's eyes light up because that is a man who knows that sometimes you have to look after number one first if you're gonna get to where you wanna go. She says she spends so much time trying to help the other women in the division get higher because that's just in her nature, that maybe sometimes she stopped working on herself as much as she should. Well, seems like moving forward, that's not going to be a problem. And number one, I still have a lot to prove. Now that chip on the shoulder that Bailey had between the years of 2015 and 2019 doesn't seem to have gone too far away. It might be smaller, but it's certainly still there. She talks about how she feels like people maybe still don't see her as the kind of superstar they see Becky Lynch, who had a meteoric rise, I think we can all agree, and is considered to be one of the biggest stars in the company. Bailey wants that. You can tell who could blame her. At this point, she's well on her way though, and she says that is something that she's aiming towards. She still wants to get to be that good. But she tells Austin that she's not going to forget those sort of things that kept her down, the low points in her career, let's be honest, and uses them as motivation to want to improve and to want to get better. Stone Cold, of course, being the huge Bailey fan that he is, completely understands this. And again, you can see him really excited that she still has that fire inside of her. And the things that she wants to achieve, while they may be different now, they're still no less important. But the one big takeaway for me that maybe wasn't necessarily said, but you could watch it on Bailey's face, Stone Cold shows her an image of the incredible women's main event from WrestleMania 35, where it's Becky, it's Ronda, and it's Charlotte in the ring. Puts that on screen. Bailey says she loved the fact that her and Sasha got to be the first to defend the women's tag titles at that Mania, the same one, but she doesn't say it. She's encouraging, but you can tell, just watch the way she looks at that image. She wants to be there. That competition between the four horsewomen is always gonna be there. Stone Cold knows it, he's watching. But as a fan, the guy loves her. He loves everything she's doing and he loves the fact that she still cares. My word, I'm excited to see what Bailey does in 2021 and moving forward. So, ding dong, there you have it. Those are the 10 things we learned from Bailey's appearance on Stone Cold Steve Austin's Broken Skull Sessions podcast. One of my favorite episodes that I think, alongside the Kurt Angle one, which I also really enjoyed. Definitely check that out if you haven't already. But let us know all of your thoughts. Did you like it? Did you hate it? Did you not care about it? Let us know in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like and share. Hit the old subscribe button if you haven't already. It's free. You can also find the original article for this at whatculture.com forward slash WWE. You can follow What Culture on Twitter at What Culture WWE. You can follow me on Twitter if that's your thing at It's Adam Nicholas. Or if you just want some more videos, there should be some after this one, I believe. Hope you've enjoyed this one. I've been Adam Nicholas. This has been What Culture Wrestling. And undoubtedly, we will see you for the next one. Ding dong! <laughs>